Let me give you the keys to winning your fantasy football league in 2024. Projected out all my tight ends, and in this video, I'm going to give you my top 12. I've already done running backs, wide receivers, and quarterbacks. Go check it out. First up at number 12, averaging 12 points per game is TJ Hawkinson. You'll notice that is not the lowest on this list. It's actually like sixth best on this list, but the problem is I only have him projected to play eight games. And in those eight games, I have him not scoring too many touchdowns and being a little bit less efficient than usual. Obviously, he's coming off an ACL. He should probably be worse. And I think this offense has plenty of other options where they don't have to force feed him the ball when he does come back. I think the right time to take Hawkinson, you kind of got to be a little risky, but I think after the top seven or so tight ends is when you can start taking that risk. He's usually going around pick 120 to 140, so waiting till then, I'm totally fine with his upside. Next up, we have number 11, David Njoku, averaging 10.8 points per game. He was used completely different last year when Joe Flacco was playing versus when Deshaun Watson was playing. With Joe Flacco, they had no Nick Chubb, so they kind of used him as the Nick Chubb type where they'd give him little screens that are uh, like four yards downfield, and he would be great run after catch. So I don't think he'll get as many receptions this year because they won't have to dump off as much, but his yards per catch will go up. I have him at 10.9. And looking back at his career, he has not really been much of a red zone threat, even though he's a freak athlete, so he only gets four touchdowns. They also added Jerry Judy, who's going to compete with him in the slot, run the same types of routes, so I just don't see a tremendous amount of upside here. At number 10, it's Evan Ingram. I know he was amazing last year. He had over 140 targets. I have met only 86 catches when last year he had 113. 11 points per game is pretty fair. Let me explain. Before last year, he never had a season over 73 catches, and that 73 did come on the Jaguars when he played 17 games. The reason he got so many targets last year is because Zay Jones missed a ton of games and Christian Kirk missed like eight games at the end of the year and they compete with the same types of routes. And let's be honest, Christian Kirk is a much better player than Evan Ingram is. Not to mention he doesn't get a lot of high value touches. Only 3.5 touchdowns I'm getting him this year and 9.3 yards per catch. That is the lowest on this list by far. 86 catches is still top three for tight ends here, but just not high enough. Then at number nine, we have Jake Ferguson averaging 11.2 points per game. I think his touchdown numbers will go up to 7.5. He had five touchdowns last year, but he did lead the tight end position in red zone targets at 25. I honestly don't know how it's possible to only score five touchdowns on that insane offense with that many targets, but he did. Beyond that, I don't think he's much of a special talent at all. He was drafted very late. He didn't do anything his rookie year. I think this is pretty much what we're going to see, like a Dalton Schultz type of performance here. Pretty much the only way he breaks fantasy if he's extremely efficient in the red zone and puts up 10 plus touchdowns, but I don't really see that happening. Moving on to number eight, we have Brock Bowers at 10.6 points per game. That's actually number 12 on this list, but I think towards the end of the year, he's really going to break out. At the start, it's really tough for a lot of rookie tight ends. It's very rare to do what Sam Laporta did. And while I do think he's actually a much better prospect than Laporta is, he's the best of all time, to be honest. I just think considering the Raiders have another good tight end, it may take a couple weeks for him to really cement himself as the tight end one. He obviously will be. And I think he'll be used a lot around the field, a lot in the slot, some easy dump off stuff that they'll manufacture touches for, but he'll also be used down the field quite a bit because he ran a 4 5 40 time. But as far as tight ends go, he is pretty small, so I only gave him four touchdowns, but he has the potential to really rise up and break fantasy. Seven is going to be Kyle Pitts in this new reformed Atlanta offense. I have him at 11.4 points per game and 13.1 yards per catch. That is second only behind George Kittle. I know it's a completely different situation in quarterback, but I think that's the type of skill set he has. Not as great of a route runner as a lot of these top guys, so I think he's better at just being a raw athlete and running downfield. Even though we have Kirk Cousins here, I really don't see a lot of touchdown upside. TJ Hawkinson in Minnesota was never really a touchdown guy with Kirk. And Kyle Pitts only had five red zone targets last year. You could say that's because of coaching, but you also earn those targets, and he is a little bit smaller for a tight end. So I think he'll be quite efficient with a lot of yards, but not a lot of TDs. Then at number six with the same points per game at 11.5, for it's Dalton Kincaid. He has a lot of upside to score touchdowns in this Bills offense, but the way he was used last year is very scary. His average depth of target was the 28th worst out of all tight ends. They barely threw it down the field to him at all. It was like 6.2. And now that the Bills don't have Stefan Diggs, of course he's going to get more work, but it's also going to be really tough to get open. They're going to crowd the hell out of the line of scrimmage. And Dawson Knox is the better red zone threat and blocker, so competing with that is not going to be easy. So I don't have him in tier one or tier two of tight ends like a lot of people do. Now we move on to the big boys, the top five, Sam Laporta at number five, averaging 12.4 points points per game. I see him having a relatively similar season to last year, just without being so efficient in the red zone. I decreased his touchdowns from 10 to 7.25, and his yards per catch is still at 10.6. That's pretty fair. I actually boosted it a little bit. He's just not a freak athlete who's really going to run far downfield. He's the possession type of receiver, like a little bit better than a Jake Ferguson type, and he's still going to be good in the red zone. Seven touchdowns is nothing to gawk at. But for some context, Sam Laporta had 16 red zone targets. He did score 10 touchdowns, where a guy like Jake Ferguson had 25 and scored five. Travis Kelsey had 21 and also scored five. He just ran really hot in the red zone. Then at number four, I think Trey McBride is going to be a little more consistent with his yards and receptions at 12.6 points per game. He's more athletic, but he also doesn't get used very far downfield. And I looked back at how Ertz was doing on the Cardinals for the past three years with Kyler Murray. They also really didn't give him many downfield touches as well. And the Cardinals don't really seem to use tight ends in the red zone. So I think five is a fair number, but he could really rack up the receptions. Ertz did that all three years he was there. And let's be honest, Ertz in the end of his career and Trey McBride at the beginning, not really the same. Trey McBride really does have like a thousand yard upside. Then we go to tight end three, George 
George Kittle at 13.3 points per game. He was by far the most efficient tight end in the league last year. His yards per catch was 15.7. I decreased that to 15.2. I was going to go lower, but I don't really see why he wouldn't be super efficient again when every single player on the 49ers offense is like mega efficient because when they get the touch, they're wide open. So with only 72 receptions, he's probably going to be second in terms of yards. And I gave him a little bit of positive touchdown regression at 7.5. It could honestly be higher because the year before last, he had 11 with Purdy. Last year, he only had six. So if he does run really hot, he could easily be the tight end one in fantasy. Or if he gets like extra volume or Ayuk is traded or something happens to Debo, like he has a lot of contingent upside. Then the tight end two is going to be Mark Andrews at 14.1 points per game. I have him at nine total touchdowns, but he may probably lead the league in touchdowns. Last year, he had 14 red zone targets in nine games. That was sixth in the league. If he plays a full season, he could push for 30. He's also kind of a downfield threat at 12.7 yards per catch. He really does run every type of route. And let's be real, Lamar has absolutely nobody else to throw to in the red zone. I get Derrick Henry's going to do his thing. He's going to score a ton and Lamar's going to run a little bit, but like Andrews is going to rack up red zone work. And then finally, the man who does it all, Travis Kelsey at 16.3 points per game. I think he has a bounce back. He's going to be more efficient, get a little bit more volume. He won't miss two games this year. And yeah, he's the tight end one. Drop a comment for what you want to see next. Like this video, drop a follow, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.